What's up, Laker fans? On Friday night, the Nuggets beat the Lakers 101-97. Let's take a closer look at how it all went down. Luke opened up his playbook a bit and started running some actions for Russell that are similar to what they do for Curry and Golden State. This is a play called Loop. In Loop, Russell's going to pass the ball from the wing to the top of the key and then cut to the opposite wing, receiving three screens along the way. Randall doesn't make contact on the first screen, but Moutier has to go wide. Same is true with Anthony Brown's screen. So by the time Russell gets the catch, he's got a ton of distance between him and Moutier. Mozgov finishes him off, but it's a wide open shot. The Lakers run the same play the next time down court, but this time Moutier is pressuring Russell and taking away the loop route. So Russell simply counters and goes over the top. Now he's got a step on Moutier and he keeps him on his hip for the remainder of the play. One thing that the Warriors do very well is create open shots out of post play. After the entry pass is made to Ingram, Clarkson goes and sets a split cut for Zubats. Meanwhile, you have Randall setting a back screen on Moutier. But that's just a decoy because they want to get Russell the open three at the top of the key. Moutier feels the screen and bites on it, so ends up getting completely spun around. By the time Russell catches the ball, he's wide open. Here's a more typical split cut. Young makes the post entry and then sets a screen on Moutier. Again, Russell is wide open, but he doesn't knock this one down. This is an example of an elevator screen. Right here you see Russell with his left fist up, which is basketball talk for, hey, I'm about to set a screen for you. But again, this is only deception to get Moutier off of the trail. Rather than screen for the opposite corner, Russell's gonna cut right between Randall and Nance here. Randall and Nance close the elevator door, and once again, Russell has an open look. When he had the ball in his hands, Russell had a good deal of success against Denver's soft hedging pick and roll coverage. Their big stays back in the paint while the guard goes over the top of the screen. This coverage is vulnerable to guards who can pull up off of the dribble because they basically have a wide open shot. Russell did a good job of creating open looks when facing ice coverage as well. Russell keeps his dribble alive and drags two defenders with him while Randall settles into the pocket. Russell had four turnovers against the Nuggets, and this is the one that concerns me the most. He often drives to the basket without breaks, meaning that once he decides to go, he can't really stop. This often results in wild passes or wild shots. In a situation like this, I'd love to see him pull back and see if he can get an isolation with the big. He's also good for about one of these turnovers per game, where someone pokes the ball away when he's not paying attention. He was effective in transition in a number of ways. Here, he's able to create a ton of space by decelerating but still being on balance. There's no reason to go over screens on Moutier. If he's going to knock down a jumper on a play like this, so be it. In man-to-man -man situations, they tried to post Moutier up against Russell, but Russell handled them pretty easily. Clarkson had another excellent two-way game, but I've been most impressed with his defense. He spent most of the game off of the ball, doing a great job of trailing shooters off of screens. The worst thing that I've seen about him, which really isn't even all that bad, is that he's a little too focused on the ball. Here, he tries to help out over on Jokic, which he probably doesn't need to do, and then Murray loses him on a screen. The shot didn't count, but it's still the wrong play. 
he also showed off some very active hands, leading the team with four steals. It's great when a guy can play good positional defense and force turnovers. On the offensive end, he contributed both on and off the ball. This play shows off some growth from him. Nance sets a down screen for him, and Murray tries to shoot the gap, trying to meet him up at the wing. Clarkson reads this and flares it. Last year, he would use screens the same way almost every time, and defenders were able to sit on that. He didn't attack closeouts as well as he normally does, but did have this one nice play. On the ball, he attacks soft hedges very well, both off with the dribble and with the pass. Here he attacks ice by snaking it and then finishes with a beautiful step through move. And then of course he uses his great straight line speed and transition to put pressure on the defense. Most Laker fans know what Randall brings to the table in transition, but what was notable about this game was the frequency. I had a full minute of raw footage of Randall making plays in transition, which is quite a bit. one-on-one -on -one offense was a bit of a mixed bag. Here they're running motion weak, and Moutier is denying Russell. That provides Randall the opportunity to attack a big off of the dribble without a help defender nearby. But he'll still have the occasional possession where he forces the issue, and defenders know that he's always going to go back to his left. He's improving in the screening game. Here he slips the screen and rolls hard, although he misses a dump off to Mozgov. But it's still encouraging to see him roll like that. And once again, here's that play where he settles into the window against Ice. This is a really good pace by both players. Just like Russell, Randall had a really bad first quarter defensively, and then there wasn't much to report after that. On this one, everybody else is matched up with their man, but I'm not sure what Randall's doing here. He ends up getting meta dunked on who comes over to try to help. Nance was excellent once again in help defense. Here he rotates all the way over from the free throw line to help Gabarón after he got back cut. He didn't have many man defense opportunities, but here on this post up, he's also guilty of reaching it. On the offensive end, he was very ambitious with his passes and it didn't really work out for him. Although at least on this one, he gets the strip and Black gets the dunk. He was effective in the couple of pick and roll opportunities that he had. And as usual, he ran the floor well and made plays in transition. Ingram's offensive difficulties continued, and I think a large part of that is shot selection. He takes a lot of unnecessarily contested shots. 
With time, he should get a better understanding of where his looks on the floor will come from. Luke put him on the elbow on a couple of plays, which I was really happy to see. Tark Black sets a screen for him, and they have a good opportunity right here, but he doesn't turn the corner particularly well and pulls up instead. Defensively, it was probably the poorest game that I've seen him play. There were several plays where it was pretty evident that he's still adjusting to the speed of the game. Unfortunately, I have to do an abbreviated version of this one. Just a quick rundown of the other guys. Mozgov had a bad game, but he did set good screens to help free up Russell. Lou Williams had a much better game, especially on the defensive end where he gave much better effort. Anthony Brown passed up a lot of shots that he needs to shoot if he wants to stick as a 3 and D guy. Black didn't have nearly as good of a game as he did against the Kings, but still his energy and ability to run the floor was very valuable. E played poor pick and roll defense, took too long to get his shot off, and took way too many long twos. And lastly, Calderon set excellent screens and controlled the action with the second unit. As always, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at LakerFilmer.